Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this video, we're going to cover 10 logo design tools for beginners in Adobe Illustrator. Now these tools can be used for logo design, symbol design, icon design, and if you're a fan of the Witcher games, well, the symbols in this tutorial may seem familiar. Rightio, let's get started. First up, the polygon tool. So if we go over to the rectangle tool, click and hold, you can select the polygon tool. Click anywhere and you can enter a radius and specify the number of sides. Let's swap the fill and the stroke and then set the fill to none. We can then scale this up holding shift and alt or option and then bump up that stroke weight. Now from the transform panel, let's make sure that scale corners and scale strokes and effects are unchecked. And now I can scale this down holding shift and you can see the stroke weight remains the same. Now if I just drag this down to the bottom here, I can hold Alt or Option and Shift and drag to create a duplicate. And again from the transform panel, I can flip this horizontally and vertically. Next, if we hop into outline mode with Command or Control Y, we get a wireframe style preview. We can zoom in and now line these up perfectly. Again, press Command or Control Y to switch back to preview mode. And if I zoom out, that's more or less the first symbol done. So if I now select the top and hold Alt or Option and Shift and drag out, again I can duplicate that top part and then hold Shift to scale this up. And I'm going to try and match the size by eye. Now I'm actually going to take a second to distort this first shape and squish it down a bit, and then I'm going to balance the overall size of both shapes. There we go, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to move this over here, and next we're going to move on to the Direct Selection tool. So this is up in the top right corner of the toolbar and it can be used to select, modify or delete individual anchor points or the line that connects two anchor points, which is what you're seeing here. Joining paths. Okay, this follows on from the last tool. So with the direct selection tool, you can select two anchor points, go up to object, down to path and select join. So these two features work really well together and you can see here I'm selecting the individual anchor points and then I can move these both out or I can undo it and join them back together. Outline mode. Okay, so we touched on this briefly earlier to line up two shapes, but this is also a great mode to modify shapes in. So with the direct selection tool, I can go in here and I can adjust the length of these lines. And you can see because they're snapping to the line, I can adjust the length without modifying the angle. Another benefit to using outline mode is when you're working on a design, there's lots of styling, possibly lots of color, and outline mode hides all of this and enables you to make precise selections. So just now I made a selection of one particular line segment. I then copy and pasted this in place and I'm adjusting the stroke weight and changing the color. I'm also making this red a global swatch, so if I want to change the color at any point, I can simply update it in the swatches panel and it gets updated throughout the entire document. And again, you can see I'm using the direct selection tool to control the length of this line without adjusting the angle. Speaking of angles, well, kind of, but not really. This video is sponsored by Envato Elements and they're providers of millions of assets with unlimited downloads all with a commercial license. And there's tons of icons, symbols, graphics, and logos that you can find on their platform. And once you're signed up, you can basically download anything you want. This includes photos, illustrations, textures, brushes, fonts, icons, motion graphics, stock video, music, sound effects, 3D, so much stuff, it's quite honestly insane, all for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. Check out the link below. Right, next up, smart guides. So these are the pink guides that you see when dragging things around. And whilst they're very useful, you can also actually turn them off because sometimes you don't want them to snap to certain things. So whereas before I was using them to lengthen a line without changing the angle, what I'm actually doing here is turning them off and zooming in loads so I can line everything up by eye. This is because smart guides are designed to work with anchor points, line segments, and essentially the geometry that you see in outline mode, rather than the styling like the reds and the blacks and the stroke thickness. So depending on what you're trying to line up, you may have them on, you may have them off. The eyedropper tool. Okay, so in a number of Adobe apps, this tool is used to sample a color from one object and apply it to another. However, in Illustrator, we can use this to clone styling as well. So you can see here, I selected the black line. I used the eyedropper tool to select the thinner red line and properties like stroke, weight, and color were then copied to that line. Pretty nifty, that one. Next up, everyone's favorite, the pen tool. Okay, so you can see I'm starting with this short red line. I can select the pen tool from the toolbar or press P on the keyboard. And then I can click on an anchor point and it will enable me to continue this line. So here I'm holding shift and clicking to the right to create a horizontal line. And again, you can see me zooming in and lining this up manually by eye. 
So at this point, I realized the sizing was slightly off. So I'm just scaling everything up slightly using the pen tool to create a new red line and then the eyedropper tool to apply those properties from the black lines. And this shape was probably the hardest to create out of all of them. And it involved a lot of manual tinkering. You can also adjust the order of shapes by right clicking, selecting a range, and then bring to front or center back, depending on which shape you want on top. Now, because the red is only a temporary color being used to show contrast, I'm actually going to change this to white here. This is so it mimics how the final design is actually going to look, and it makes it easier for me to visualize the end result. And I'm now going to take a minute to make lots of minor adjustments to this. And this next bit is a combination of all the tools and features that we've covered so far. Okay, so the next shape is actually very similar to this. So we're going to duplicate this by holding Alt or Option and dragging, and then using the Rotate tool to rotate this 180 degrees. For this next one, we're just going to duplicate the triangle itself. Select just the left edge with the Direct Selection tool, copy and paste, and then use the Eyedropper tool to sample those properties from the red line. Again, I'm going to move this into position and line this up by eye. Looking good. Okay, for the last one, I'm going to duplicate everything again and rotate 180 degrees. Now I'm going to delete that angled red line and then use the pen tool holding shift to create a new horizontal red line. Let's move this up to the top and line everything up. And if I double click the red global swatch, because I set everything to global, I can now change the color of this swatch to white and it gets updated throughout the entire document. Now I'm going to duplicate all of these shapes into the middle of the artboard. And the reason I do this is because the next step is rather permanent. So I like to keep a backup of the original shapes with all the strokes being fully editable. Expanding appearances. Okay, so if I select all of these shapes in the middle and go into outline mode, remember that's command or control Y, this is what my shapes geometry looks like. If I go to object and expand, leave everything selected and then click OK, the geometry of your shape will now match what you see in preview mode. These strokes are no longer editable. In fact, Illustrator doesn't even recognize them as strokes anymore. They're now shapes with a fill color. There's many reasons you might do this. It might be a particular feature that needs the shapes expanded first, or you might just like to expand the geometry and have more control over each of the individual anchor points. In this case, it's a feature. So I'm going to select the black and white shape and from the Pathfinder option, select minus front. And as you can see in outline mode, this basically knocks the shape on top, the white shape, out of the shape below, the black shape. Now some of these are more complex, which leads us on to the Shape Builder tool. So if I select everything for this shape and then navigate to the Shape Builder tool from the toolbar on the left, if you can't see it, it might be hidden under the Live Paint tool. This enables me to click and drag through a series of different shapes and either combine them together or in this case, hold Alt or Option and click and drag through multiple shapes to knock them out of another one. Now at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident. So I'm going to select all these shapes on the top and then delete those. I can then use the align tools on the right to align these horizontally and space them out equally. Next, I'm going to select the rectangle tool and just draw a nice big black box. I'm going to resize this so it fills the entire artboard and then make sure that I send this to the back. Now everything's black and obviously we can't see anything. So I'm going to select all of my shapes and change their color to white. And lastly, we're going to take a look at outer glow. So I've expanded and tidied up all my shapes. Now with one selected, I'm going to go to effect, stylize and select outer glow. I can pick a color. I can select a blend mode type. We'll go with normal for this example. I think I'll go for purple on the color. And I can change the opacity and the amount of blur. Once you're happy, click OK, and you'll see this effect listed on the right hand side under the appearance panel. You can edit this or you can delete it altogether. And without a glow applied to all of the shapes, you get something that looks like this. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So if you enjoyed this one, you can subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, take care, and I'll see you next time.